Alright, so I got that button pressed. Go there. Pull up this screen and go over here. 60. There we go. 59. 58. This is a countdown. 57. Slade and 56. Mason show. 55. 54. This continues to be a countdown 52. to the Slade and Mason one. show. 50. 49. 48. You're listening to the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 45. 44. 43. This is the continued 42, countdown. 41. Slade and Mason show. 39. 38. Right now. 37. You're oh, listening sorry. to the countdown. 35. The Slade and Mason show. 33. Please stand by me as you are listening to the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. Is this mic open? 27. Is this mic open? Of course, the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 23. 22. We continue now with the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 18. 17. Stand by. 16. As we are now delivering the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 12. 11. Yes. 10. This is our countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 6. Five, exciting. Four, there we go. Yay, Three, go, 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 two, go. One. Now broadcasting from the Dan Mason Studios, deep in the heart of Virginia, <laughs> it's the Slade and Mason Show. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this is the Slade and Mason Show. Well, good morning, everybody. I am Dan Mason, and to my immediate left is... Nobody. That's right. J.D. is out again. Uh, send him well wishes. Please go on Facebook and say wonderful, nice things to him because, yeah, I, I think that would be a goodly thing. So there you go. Um, so good morning. It is the second day of August, 2020. And again, I am Dan Mason. So we are going to be doing the Slade Mason show today, and we are going to be without JD, but we're going to have a uh, a good program. I promise. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, so something I want to talk about first off is, is oh, for, oh, 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 hold on. <clears throat> Let me get through my disclaimer. Hold on. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> All right, the Slayton Mason Show is all about you and us. It's like a radio program where we share with you news stories and things that we see or I see throughout the week. It is our take on it. Basically, just 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 saying the things that you're thinking in your mind, your dirty little mind, and you just never hear on the radio. We're just having fun. Don't take it too seriously. Please enjoy. Uh, all the music you hear is brought to you by Dano Music. Um, it's in the link somewhere. Let's see. Is it in there? in there yeah it is danosongs.com um and of course we do have an instagram page uh the slade mason show uh go check it out and of course don't forget to tell your friends neighbors cops people you see in the street and as always we are brought to you by i see something i see we'll talk about that a little bit later uh right now it is 2020 if you're listening to this in the future or if you're listening to this in the past uh, by the way, if you're listening to us in the past, uh, can can you share with us the uh, time travel machine? Anyway, um, I want to talk a little about a little bit about something that's a little bit near and dear to my heart. That uh, it's the census. Okay, um, <clears throat> I know, I know, I know. It's it's kind of a pain in the you know what, but <clears throat> everybody got a postcard. Everybody in the United States of America received a postcard, and on there was a unique code and essentially what you do is you grab the postcard log into the website put in the unique code and it recognizes who you are and then you list all the the peeps that are living in your home as of uh, April 1st and that's it moving on now of course me with the 6,000 children it took me quite a little bit of time but I digress um, Something's going on here. Hold on. I'm going to put this on pause for a second. Okay. So um, here's the deal. I did this to U.S. since I was an enumerator uh, back in 2010. 
And essentially what I had to do was I got in my little tiny Nissan and I drove from house to house and I had a clipboard and a sheet of paper and I had to write out everything. I had to write out your first and last name, date of birth, where your address is, all this fun stuff. And the reason we're doing this is really simple. We need to know where human beings are in the United States of America. It's not so that someone can come knocking on your door and take you away. Okay. It's just to find out where, where are all these people? Where, you know, where do we need to send the money? So if there's a bunch of people living in New York city, that's why we need to send like $50 billion over there to take care of their roads and infrastructure and things like that. If you're living in, in Ishkabibble, New York, then yeah, you guys get 49 cents because you just, you have two sheep. Okay. So that's the logic. That's what's going on here. It's really simple. Um, between you, me and lamppost, you really don't have to give them a whole lot of information. Um, a reason being is they're really just trying to count heads. They're trying to anticipate if they can find out the age of children, that would be awesome too, because now they can allocate school buses if we ever go back to school again. Um, and that's the logic behind it. You know, do we have enough hospitals in the area? Do we allow hospitals in the area, uh, based upon the census? Uh, do we need more police or less police? Do we need um, do we need more uh, uh, free flowing water coming into a particular area? Maybe another substation for electricity, because we you know hey we all like to turn a light switch on and have it work right? That'd be pretty cool. You know you don't want to have like one feeder line going into New York City just to find out that uh, yeah that will burn out in about twelve seconds. So this is what it's all about. It has nothing to do with tracking people down and putting them on a bus and sending them back to Hoboken, New Jersey. No, it's about finding out where the people are. Number one, it's part of the constitute. Well, not constitute. Anyway, it's it's one of our founding fathers' ideas. Uh, we won't mention his name, but anyway, um, <clears throat> I don't get in too much trouble. But it it is something that needs to be done. You guys got to do it. I'm not going to harp on you too hard, but. It would be really appreciative if it was completed. It, uh, and if that enumerator comes knocking on your door, please, 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 please be polite to them. They are just trying to do their job. They're not trying to be jerks. Um, you know, it, it's all it's all plain nice, nice. And there's it was interesting because only 60% have responded. Usually it's up to close to 80, 90%. 60% have not responded. So... The U.S. Census is also hiring people at a crazy rate. So you can go check out their website as well uh, for possible jobs. So, hey, you know, goofy things are happening out here. So I'm um, just, you know, just sharing. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. So there you go. Um, all right. So that's my uh, that's my little soapbox for the morning. Um, I'll get off of that. Um, something really cool has been happening. And they they call it brushing, and I've I've kind of been the focus of a brushing a little bit. Uh, the headphones I'm wearing were acquired from Amazon. I'll give you the backstory. So when you get product from Amazon, and it's something new, a lot of times you'll look at it and go, eh, "It looks just too good to be true." Now these these headphones are pretty decent. They're nice. They're comfortable. They have a good sound quality to them. Uh, they don't crackle. I can, I can, I, they have multiple ports on them. So I could actually share, if I had someone sitting next to me, I could just do a cable to cable and they could share the same uh, sound through the headphones. It's a pretty neat feature. Uh, so I got those and then they sent me a notification, said, hey, we'd like to send you uh, completely free some wireless Bluetooth headphones. So I'm thinking, well, that was kind of nice of them. And all I did was I, I you know, I, they reached out to me directly. And then uh, they're like, hey, we're going to send you these and, and we'll send you four more if you write us a review. And I said, all right, I'll write a review. So I put the headphones on. I, try, I, I tried them out. I First off, I tried them out. I made sure they actually worked. And they did. They worked quite, quite well. Um, where are they? Well, I have many children, so those headphones are long gone. But anyway, um, this is referred to in the industry as brushing. 
And essentially, you're getting something for free, but you are then going to write a, a gushing review about how wonderful it is. And we are in the middle of a, of a brushing right now, they believe. What is happening is there are seeds. And if you haven't heard this in the news, you can go research this real quick. It's pretty funny. People are receiving packages in the mail, unsolicited packages. And inside it'll say electronic device. Uh, it'll say uh, jewelry. It'll say, you know, commemorative coins, things of that nature. Inside is a bag full of seeds. Now, they're freaking out a little bit. The USDA is freaking out because we don't know wh 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 why seeds, what's going on, okay? They're telling people, do not open the package. Do not touch the seeds. Do not plant the seeds. Uh, some people are reporting that there is a purple hue on the outside of each seed. Obviously, someone didn't read the F uh, USDA warning telling you not to open the package up. But anyway, so um, m my sister has actually received two of these packages, and she's not an online person. So how they're finding addresses, I don't know. How they're finding names, I don't know. But it is the Internet. It's all out there anyway. But just a heads up, uh, they are trying to keep track of those seeds and find out what they are. So far, they're finding things like their carrot seeds or rosemary seeds or carrot, you know, just very simple types of seeds. I have one picture I saw it looked like a lot like it was an acorn. Okay. But the other thing they're concerned about is there's a coating on the outside of like a purple hue, as I mentioned. So they're thinking maybe that's a, they don't know what that is. So they don't want people to plant them. Please don't plant them. It's too weird. I... We think it's just a brushing, but, uh, you know, if there's some invasive species coming in, we don't want to hear, right? Uh, uh, yeah, let's uh, send it back to China. Yeah, yay! Uh, well, so that's that's what's going on right now. So if you get a package, hey, if you get a package, let us know. Take a picture of it. Send it over to our Facebook page, uh, uh, which, we, you know, Slade Mason Show. Mason, M-A-Y-S-O-N, Y because we love you. Yes. So um, let's see. The um, uh, Mennonites and the Amish are uh, really good at planting and what have you. But um, the other thing is... <laughs> Apparently, the Amish like to drink. Well, at least one individual. Uh gentleman's name is Adam Byler. And... Uh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. He is, uh, I guess, 19 years old, and he was in New York's uh, Chattaquaya, Chattaquaya, Chattaquaya County. There we go. He is being, he was arrested. He was arrested uh, as a drunken Amish teenage buggy driver. That's right. Uh, apparently blew through a stop sign at a high speed, high rate of speed. Uh, actually causing the buggy to tip over. The people in the buggy were tossed out of the vehicle and the horse was injured. Now he's facing charges of drunk driving, torturing an animal, reckless second degree endangerment. And because there was a 17 year old kid in the, uh, the buggy uh, endangering the welfare of a child. So, all this while driving a buggy drunk. So I've seen these guys go clipping down the road about four miles an hour. So yeah, yeah, I'd be, I'd be pretty, uh, pretty upset if I saw them. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those guys. You know what I'm saying? Um, another little, uh, another little scam that's going on here. Uh, scam? Who said anything about scam? Stop it. Leave me alone. I, it's my show. We talk about this here. Um, apparently. If, if, uh, let's see, if someone offers you, let's see, remember, okay, so if someone, there's a new, there's a new, uh, scam going on that apparently was going to give you bitcoins, but you got to give them something in return. Look, here's the deal. Someone calls you up over the phone and they want to give you $50, but all you have to do is give them 10. Tell you what, just tell them. Send me the 40 bucks. 
Just send me the forty bucks. I had a, I had a fellow, and I don't again. I don't talk about the the, the business I work with, work for, but um, I had a fellow call me up, and actually, it's two people called up. So apparently, our telephone number is one digit off from another. Um, if someone calls you up on the phone and they say, "Hey, you won this lottery." Or if they send you a postcard, that was the other thing. I had a postcard. Hey, I got this telephone number. I'm going to call you. Get my, I'm calling my, get my $50,000. I said, I said, I said, what? I'm calling to get my 50. I got my access code. Oh, for the love of God, what is going on here? So the first call, I said, look, I, I think you got the wrong telephone number. And then I got another phone call. Hey, I'm calling for my $50,000. Different guy. Same voice. But anyway, different guy. <laughs> Do you want me to use a different voice? Yes, I'm calling about my fifty thousand dollars. All right. Um, I said, look, what, what, you know, first off, don't call people and ask for fifty thousand dollars. It's probably a scam. Also, I think you misdialed the number. And then I said, I don't know who this is that you're supposed to be dealing with via a postcard. I said, a little bit of advice. Do not give them your routing and account number. Do not give them your credit card number. If they want to give you $50,000 and if they're legitimate, hey, let me go pick up the check from you or you can mail me the check. That's it. Don't be stupid. I didn't say that. I didn't say stupid. But don't be stupid. <laughs> and go, yeah, the routing number is 0210028. No, write this down. <laughs> No, it's it's a bad idea. It's a really bad idea. So don't be doing it. You're going to lose a whole lot of money. Speaking of losing a whole lot of money, I hope this little trip to Mars with our helicopter works out well. Um, it's a new rover. Uh, well, rover, I don't know what you call it. It's a helicopter. It is a rover. It's a rover. It's a helicopter. It's a spread. No, okay. Uh, we have launched a a helicopter, and it is headed towards Mars. And the really interesting thing about it is the fact that it it runs in anticipation of a low density atmosphere. Let me try to explain. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are on Earth, and we have a helicopter, and it blah, 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 runs through the blades. Okay, what if we had to build a helicopter that ran in the ocean? So water is a lot thicker, denser, clumpier, okay? So you'd have to have, like, really strong engine. You'd have to have these blades, like, you know, made of, like, titanium or something, <laughs> ripping through the water. It would eventually work. I think that's what they call submarines. But in, in, in any event, um, as you say, a submarine, you got to, you know, get a, get a good, good girth going. So Mars is the opposite of that. It's going from, like... Going from it's like 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 let's say we wanted to fly a submarine in the air. It's a lot thinner, so of course the blades would have to spread out a lot further. The engine wouldn't have to be as strong. You'd probably just want to whip it around just a few times as opposed to like a on like that. So that's what we've done. We've created this helicopter that is working in a lower density atmosphere and the way they had to do it was they actually have this it's uh nasa has the world's largest vacuum tank if you will it's this huge 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 building and they get it down to almost pure space vacuum now mars is not that way so they would have to attenuate that they put the little uh, uh helicopter into the tank, they bring it down to the atmosphere that matches Mars, and then through remote control, they actually run this uh, helicopter up and down, around, and make it go left and right and up and down, and y you get the picture. All right, so apparently, we are sending this to Mars. It is attached to a rover, and you remember the rover. They made some massive improvements because remember those tires keep burning out. They've uh, attached it so that when the helicopter gets there, it will launch from the rover. So the rover will go off in one direction. The helicopter goes off and plays and takes pictures and 
tests dirt and kicks up storms and things of that nature. So what it, what would it would you, so you got a checkbook in front of you and you need to fill out a dollar figure amount. Okay? All right. And this dollar figure amount has to cover the cost of getting a big chunk of metal highly articulated from this planet over to that planet, which by the way, we're never going to live at. I'm going to go right on a limb and say that because yeah, first off, why let's go to Europa or some other, you know, a, a moon. I think we'd be better off going to a moon somewhere uh, than we would be going to another planet because all the other planets we have are either too hot or too cold or they have, you know, like a dust. Mars has a dust that like will kill you. They don't have a um, a magnetic core to keep the radiation off of us. So yeah, it's like you know going out, you know, in the, in the middle of uh, July with no sunscreen, twenty four seven, three sixty five. Not going to do it for me. But anyway, the question was, what would it cost to get that big chunk of metal there? The answer is three billion dollars. Now you know what that sounds like a lot of money, but most millionaires and billionaires have that, you know, that's chump change, uh, $3 billion. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, that's what we're spending. We're spending $3 billion, with a B, dollars to get to the planet Mars. Yeah, yeah. Just just to test out the concept of a helicopter. Well, hey, maybe we can do the, uh, maybe we'll do a new sequel of MASH. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be right back. Thank goodness for this break. Sadly, however, we will return to the Slade and Mason show. Today in history, August 2nd, 461, Margarine is arrested near Toronto, deposed by Sabina, General Resimer, as puppet emperor, uh, kind of like Fozzie Bear. 1610, Henry Hudson sails into what is now known as Hudson Bay, thinking he's made it through the Northwest Passage and reached the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> what a ding dong. <laughs> 1776, we see the signing of the United States Declaration of Independence. Okay, August to, what, Man, was the government that slack even back then? 1790, the first U.S. Census is conducted. There were like 12 people. 1918, Japan announces that it is deploying troops to Siberia in the aftermath of World War I. Okay, Japan's kind of almost a tropical island. You better put your uh, long underwear on. It's cold up there. 1934, Adolf Hitler becomes Führer of Germany. Whatever. And finally, 1990. Iraq invades Kuwait. This, of course, leads us into the Gulf War. The war, of course, destabilized the price of oil, which uh, made Japan come up with the idea of coming up with a Prius that was released to the United States around 1999. Uh, the price of oil still went up, so, of course, the introduction of the air car in 2016. Oh, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. Never mind, never mind. Uh, never mind, never mind. I'm Dan Mason, and that's August 2nd. <laughs> When you're out on the road and you want something good to eat and you don't want to waste no goddamn time, you want some food fast, tasty, cheap, come on down to Brimley's where we only got five things. We got soda pop, we don't even got no diet, so don't even f***ing ask. We got the best goddamn chicken sandwich you ever had and we got a cheeseburger that's second to none. That leaves us with two more items for our menu. Cause remember, we only got five things. That leaves us with French fries, crispy, delicious, moist on the inside, and lots of goddamn salt. What could that fucking fifth item be? How about the best goddamn macaroni and cheese you ever fucking put in your mouth? That's right. Ripley's only got five things. Soda, chicken sandwich, a cheeseburger, French fries, mac and cheese. And don't ask us for a goddamn salad. And don't ask for a goddamn diet soda. And if you don't like the cheese, we'll fucking and peel it off because we ain't doing no special orders. They's all getting cheese on them. And if you want condiments, we got ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, relish, and diced onions. Help your yourself because we're not here to serve you. We're here to serve you. <laughs> 
Come down to Brinley's, Brinley's, really good food. Damn good food. Now available in 27 great locations. Whoopsies. Hold on. There we go. This is a strange love story. One boy singing to another. I should sing my love song to my lady fair, but I sing to her brother. Luke, you're really nowhere. How could there be a doubt? But you can be my buddy, kid, cause your sister knocks me out. I have to lend you money. If I don't, you're sure to pout. You're such a pest, but be my guest, cause your sister knocks me out. Now you told me you'd fix up a date. You promised to do it. Got to date her for it gets too late. Someone else might beat me to it. Ordinarily, I would brush you off, but I'll be a real good scout. Got to see lots more of you, kid, cause your sister knocks me out. Hey, Jer. What do you want, Luke? You remember when a guy came over and put his arm under my foot? What, Luke? Well, I couldn't figure out how come his shoes weren't together. Hey, Luke, I can't either. What? Well, gee whiz, Jer. How come? Luke, are I'm, you listen to me? I'm listening. Please. Your brilliant conversation I can really do without. Still, I'm your friend till the bitter end because your sister knocks me out. You had me up for dinner. All you served was sauerkraut. <laughs> that meal was bad, but I'm not mad because your sister knocks me out. Never thought when I first looked at you <laughs> that you'd be Dan Cupid. Although it's a fact that you're not smart, it's quite certain that you're stupid. You're enough to drive me crazy. I get so mad, I'd like to shout. I know I'm hooked, and my goose is cooked. Cause your sister, George! Um. <laughs> Sadly, we must now return you to the Slade and Mason Show. Hey, Macarena. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this is the Slade Mason Show. All right. Good. That was funny. That was... <laughs> uh, that was... Uh, Your Sister Knocks Me Out by Jerry Lester and Jack Adrian in his orchestra. I guess that's how that works out here. So... Uh, that is in commemoration of Star Wars Day. Let's see, Luke and uh, Princess Leia. No, that was not right. Uh, this is actually National Sister Day. That's right, National Sister Day. Let me go to this thing here. National Sister Day, August 2nd. Here we go. I'm waiting for it to load up. Um, uh, just uh, does that. Celebrates the bond between sisters. Oh, yeah, brothers, I guess that's what it is. Um, always arguing, but uh, in the end, you know, you guys cherish each other and the memories and yada 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 so so in 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 commemoration of uh national sister day that's what that was all about so um hey uh i am dan mason and we are going to talk a little bit about our sponsor that's right uh a sister to us all is sheila keenan with her little business here i see something i see treats so they're at www.icsomethingic.com so that's I C E Y S O M E T H I N and then I C E Y dot com. And why are we talking about that? Well, it's uh, shaved ice and treats. And what this is all about is she's got this neat little truck and she'll come over to your place, park the vehicle, and the next thing you know, gaggles of human beings are coming around and looking for a tasty treat. And what it's all about is 
She gets the, the uh, she shaves the ice, these beautiful Italian slicers, and it almost, it's almost like ice cream. It's so smooth. It's so delicious. And then she puts these wonderful flavorings on top. Um, you know, orange and lemon, and you got citrusy flavors. You've got uh, tropical fruit flavors. She does uh, like a pina colada thing. It's just to die for. So, uh, and then of course, uh, for the kids, you can put uh, gummy worms and gummy bears and things like that on top of them, and they freeze up hard and then crunch them up. And Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. anyway, so get them called eight zero four six one seven eighty eight twenty seven. That's eight zero four six one seven eighty eight twenty seven. That's Eight zero four. That's referred to an, as an area code. Six one seven. Uh, that's referred to as the exchange. Eight eight two seven. So you don't forget. Call eight zero four six one seven eight eight. Two seven. You ever those recordings are funny. Um anyway, give her a call. Tell her that I sent you. Uh tell Sheila I was uh, thinking of her and uh I see something to treats and you you guys will have a great time with it. Um you got birthday parties coming up, corporate events, uh there are fundraisers you can use them for, um, socials, birthday parties, as I mentioned. The the the, the fun thing is you some people actually hire them to come to their place of uh whatever. And they get the treats and then you guys spike them up, which would be totally awesome and totally shared by everybody and enjoyed. And <sighs> Anyway, give them a call. 804-617-8827. That's 804-617-8827. Tell them you heard about us on the Slate of Mason show. And, well, they won't give you anything free, but they'll say, oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's cool. All right. So what are we going to talk about next? All right. Let's see what I got. Let me let me let me check my notes and find out what's going on. Okay. Um does anybody here know uh all right, well, let, let's do all right. No, we're not going to do that. No, I'll do this. Let's do this other story. No, 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 no. We're going to do this one. No, 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 this one. This one right here. There. That one. All right. So <sighs> Sometimes people have a lot of time on their hands. Um, so I went walking last night and it just finished raining, which means the toads and the frogs are out and they're chirping and making lots of noises and, and, and whatnot, not what. And um, uh, one of the frogs tried to play Frogger and it failed. And there is no reset for that. It just happens and it's nature okay all right so granted human structure is kind of encroaching on natural life but hey you know this is the ebb and the flow we're here we're here to make a big stink so eventually maybe we'll be you know we'll be gone okay because we're we're making a bigger stink on ourselves but anyway so there's there's a waxing and waning back and forth the things that happen why am i bringing this to your attention okay so in england uh i guess somebody was uh, walking past a well and this is an old well this is in england by the way and came across an old near an old ruined medieval castle and apparently someone had built a uh a, a well, basically. Long story short. And what had had happened? What had had happened? What had happened? Was they found an owl at the bottom of the well? It was an eagle owl. So you can Google that eagle owl. And it was stuck in. The, so of course you can't. You know, if you're at the bottom of the well and it's only about you know two and a half, three feet in diameter, you're not going to be able to, as a bird, fly straight up because you got to fly laterally. So it couldn't get out. Um, so what did they do? Well, they lowered like a sack that had food in it and brought it down into a well. 
thinking they'd entice the owl into the bag. How many times has that been tried? And how many times has that failed? I'm at the bottom of a well, and I'm like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Hey, we got a Subway sandwich for you. I don't want a Subway sandwich. I want to get out of the well. Aren't you hungry? Jump into the little cage that we built for the... No, I want to get out of here, please. <laughs> so um, it didn't work. So what they did was they then started pumping down oxygen into the well to make sure the, the animal had air because, of course... All right, so when you breathe and you have a concealed container, I don't want to freak anybody out here, but if there's oxygen down there, life is good. But as you breathe, you're creating carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide sinks. So as you're breathing, the well from the ground up, from your feet up, is starting to fill up with carbon dioxide. So in essence, you would, uh, yeah, you'd die because you're eating up all the oxygen in that little tiny chamber. It's physics. It's science. I'm loving it. So they quickly pumped down some oxygen, which, of course, displaced the carbon dioxide. I don't know how they did that. But anyway, after like 12 hours and 12 firefighters and a six-volunteer technical team and two staff members, they finally lowered down a person who then picked up the owl and brought it up and I'm very happy for the owl, but I'm thinking, wow, really? Really? Yeah, so that's what's going on there. I'll I'll, I'll just uh, I'll save that story, story for you guys there as well. Um, hey, good news, guys. Got some really good news for you guys. We can all sleep happily now. King Jong-un said that because now that his nation has nuclear weapons, he absolutely guarantees... The world is now safer. Yeah, okay, you bought that, right? Yeah, he says that, uh, you know, with the nuclear, he doesn't, no one's feeling threatened anymore. Um, life is good. We're all going to be happy. Kumbaya. Let's hold hands together. Uh, yeah. So, no. So, I we... we, we uh, not sure what his logic was, but uh, I think I think he's got some psychological problems, maybe a little bit. Something's going on upstairs. His elevator doesn't go all the way up to his French fries or something. I don't know, but we have to watch out for this fellow because, yeah, he's kind of an issue here. But, uh, yeah, 67 years of uh, North Korea, South Korea war ending. Uh, so he made that fun little announcement. And, uh, yeah, that's great. That's great. All right. So what else we got going on here? Who likes food? I like food. Yep, I like food. So apparently there is a food that you don't want to eat and I don't want to eat because it smells like, I don't know, rotting animal flesh, but tastes so good. <laughs> I'm talking about jackfruit. Have you guys heard of this one? Uh, Duran, it is the nastiest smelling thing. As a matter of fact, it is not allowed on airplanes. You cannot bring jackfruit onto the airplane because while you may think it's delicious, 50% of all the other people think it tastes like fecal matter. It smells disgusting. Um, it smells like, all right, well, I, I think I've been pretty descriptive. But anyway, um, an interesting new thing has developed. Turns out that Duran fruit or jackfruit is, has, so its structure, the interior structure is such that it's, it's got this weird um, uh, anatomy, if you will, internally. So when you carbonize it, it becomes this amazing super, compass uh, super capacitor, which means you can store energy with it. And it may be, it may be a part of your next cell phone. Can you imagine jackfruit in your cell phone? It'd be pretty interesting. But yeah, it's apparently the structure has this weird uh, ability to hold energy. So 
Uh, they're working on that. I'm going to share that story with you. Uh, lots of information in there. They're talking about diamonds, how you can store energy on diamonds, uh, which is good because, quite frankly, there's a lot of diamonds out there that people think, oh, my gosh, i got to pay hundreds of thousands. Of no, 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 no. If they took all the diamonds and I, something ridiculous, like if they if they dispersed all the diamonds, everybody would have like a pound and a half of diamonds sitting around their house. So diamonds are very common. It's just that if you control all the diamonds, how do I get on this tangent? If you control all the diamonds, then there's a very uh, uh, limited access to them. That makes them scarce. Got it? So if I own, you know, all the raccoons on the planet and I only release like one or two a year to show the public, oh my gosh, they'd be worth billions and billions of dollars. Oh, look at that raccoon. They're common as they're as common as raccoons, you know, or squirrels. That'd be a better analogy because pfft, around here, squirrels are like pfft, pfft, squirrels. <laughs> anyway, um, so that that's what's going on there. The um, very interesting story. I'm going to share that with you guys as well. Um, and again, speaking of eating, who doesn't like to eat? Well, not jackfruit, of course, but I got to share this next story. It's really fun. Um, let me go pull it up real quick. ABC News. And again, I'll share this in the uh, the description. Um, the, apparently, a Red Lobster employee stopped himself and found a rare blue lobster. Now, he was going to pop it into the bin, but did discover that this lobster was completely blue. There are a couple areas that were a little bit of, you know, red and you know, a little bit of orange, what have you. But <laughs> they called him an eagle eye employee. Dude, if you can't tell the difference between a blue lobster and a gray lobster or a black lobster, mm, I'm not going with eagle eye. So, but, uh, <laughs> well, in any event, um, the 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 fellow did find him. They say they're, it's pretty rare. It's like one out of every two million. It's just a a weird DNA change that takes place. And so they saved it. They contacted the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, uh, let them know that they found it. And they said, yep. They said uh, they got in touch with the Akron Zoo. Uh, see if they'd be interested in Claude. Get it? His name was Claude because he named it. Was, uh, so they named it. It was named after his front. So they, anyway. Um, in any event, the um, he is sitting in the zoo. He's going to be fine. Um, he's he's going to live the rest of his years as a blue lobster in Claude's man cave. Dude, I can't make this stuff up. Um, so, yeah. So there you go. He, uh, we got uh, Claude has been saved. Um, tastes a lot like chicken, but uh, <laughs> that's what happened there. Um, did you know... You you didn't? Oh, all right. We'll just go on to the next story. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, apparently, Millennia Trump is decided she's going to now work on the Rose Garden. That's right. Rose Garden is just so uh, last Thursday. So what she's going to do is she is going to re-scape it. Hmm. First of all, those pesky roses have to go, don't they? Uh, so uh, apparently they're starting to, uh, they have drapes, tarps, padding, hung over the West Wing um, colonnade, colonnade, excuse me, uh, in front of the Oval Office. And that is done just to protect the facade. And they're going to be going ahead and like, I don't know, uh, we don't know. So, she, you know, it wasn't uh, 19, was it 19, never, yeah. So apparently what she's going to do is bring it back to the style of the 1962, like the Kennedys had it. Hmm. I don't know if she thinks she's a Kennedy. I, I, someone has to let her know she's not a Kennedy. But in any event, um, as you know, uh, Michelle Obama had a, a garden outside of the South Lawn. Uh, Ms. Trump has covered, uh, been keeping tabs on that and continued to... Uh, help produce uh, produce from there. But I'm thinking, did she really get her hands dirty? Can you imagine her getting down on her hands and knees with a trowel 
and digging up and moving worms and rocks? I don't think so. Anyway, we'll see how that rolls out. We'll see what kind of controversial thing. We'll see. We'll see what kind of dead bodies that uh, get pulled up from the Nixon administration. <laughs> be great. I can't wait. Also, if your kids are playing, uh, speaking of dirt, if your kids are playing with Minecraft, okay, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. They're learning about the real world. Say what? That's right. If you start looking at things with an electron scan microscope, you're going to find that everything is blocks. Blocks on top of blocks on top of blocks on top of blocks. Blah, 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 blah. You see where we're going here? Yeah, apparently a recent study was done. Um, this goes back to, well, it was just July 27th. Um, let's see. They looked at things like icebergs and rock pieces and everything, everything on a microscopic level. And all they're finding is everything is a block. It's a block. Right. So, um, look, uh, was it dolomite? Is that the one I'm looking at here? Yeah. Dolomite material structure. Everything is like a block or a parallelogram to that extent. And the study, oh, I can't pronounce these words. I'll just put in the post here because these are not, uh, Gambard Domoskis of the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. Lots of fun stories in here about that. So, yeah, apparently we are Minecraft characters, and uh, your children are most likely uh, playing with us right now. So, hmm, we are all built by Steve. So, there you go. Or uh, uh, Notch. You know what I'm talking about for those of you. Are, for those of you people who are hip, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, if you're looking to uh, do a burglary, not that I recommend it, but if you're going to be burglarizing somebody and <laughs> have a plan, and what I'm saying is because if you go in to the house and let's say you thought they were like, I don't know, at the airport, and the airport takes forever, as we all know. If you thought they were at the airport and they're not, and then you get home and you're trying to like keep them the the these people restrained while you go through their house and steal their stuff, here's something you should not use to restrain them. You ready? Uh a bra. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, apparently, uh, according to the Jefferson County police department, uh, troopers found, uh, 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 a man, a man, a woman, uh, it was 30 year old Jeremy Appleton and 36 year old Andrea Roten, uh, entered the home on July 19th, thinking the couple had left and turns out they had not and tried to restrain one of the victims with a bra. Because before, of course, they then escaped from the home. Uh, the two apparently were going through the home trying to find prescription drugs. I think they need a little more help than that. Um, and evidently, um, just that. Let's see. Yeah, not the brightest uh, pennies in the bunch here. Um, and the other, other interesting thing is they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't say whose bra it was. So I, I, I don't have any more news on that story. But anyway, we'll put a link there as well. And um, <clears throat> let's see how much time we got here. Okay, we got a little more time here. Um, let, let's 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 do this part. Let's do let's get this out of the way because there's still a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Let's turn the volume down on here. Let's press this button. Go. Now a little higher, a little higher. Come on, weird out warrior. There we go. All right. What happened? Where to go? There we go. Thanks, weird out. Okay. All right, so this is the. Why did it stop again? Oh, oh, yet to press the button here, and then press that button. There we go. Hey, there we go. Sorry, weirdo. All right, so this is the reason we are the fattest nation in the world. Uh, Heinz, yes, Heinz, the ketchup company, is now making baby food, and the packaging has that stereotypical Heinz logo on it, so they can now imprint at such an early age. 
that they know that they need to use Heinz ketchup and they need to use Heinz mayonnaise and they need to use Heinz relish and they need to use Heinz mustard. So, yeah, nothing like starting real young. And, of course, Klondike bars. Yes, delicious Klondike bars. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Klondike has released the new Klondike bar donut. <laughs> It is a donut-shaped bar. Well, it's kind of like a donut-shaped bar. So it's a basic Klondike bar, but it's got a hole dead center. Okay? And then it's got the coating on top, and it's got sprinkles on it. And it looks just like, you know, a Klondike bar donut. Uh, of course, now, I think this is... Between you, me, and Lamppost, I think this was just a sneaky way of saving some money because now they've just got that little punch hole of, of ice cream that's now missing. They'll probably use that as a new product, you know, donut holes, Klondike bar donut. Oh, anyway, that's where they're at. And we were talking about Minecraft before, but hey, if you are a Minecraft person, Kellogg's is releasing the new Minecraft Creeper Crunch cereal. That's right, Creeper Crunch cereal. Little tiny marshmallow cubes. Don't get grossed out by it. It's coming out uh, this month, August. It's going to be a very short time. So if you want it, you got to get a hold of it right now because if you want to be the fattest part of this nation, that's what you have to do. And that, my friends, is the reason we are the fattest nation on the planet. All right. Thanks, Weird Al. Appreciate it. Have a nice day. Drive carefully. And remember uh, to eat it. Just eat it. Woo! Eat it! All righty. So what do we got here? Um. <laughs> I love these stories. These are great. Uh, we have, uh, where is this located? I want to make sure I get the city state. The Thai city of Lubar. Lubar. L-O-P-B-U-R-I. Lubar. Okay. So, Thai city of Lubar has given up. Here's the dealio. Um, so people are not out and about. I'll leave it at that. So there are monkeys and these monkeys are usually fed by people who are out and about, but they're not being fed like they used to be. They're now not eating like, you know, fruits and vegetables. They're eating junk food. We're talking like KFC. We're talking like Whoppers. We're talking all that fun stuff. And they're becoming quite aggressive about it. So they want that food. They they are now craving that high fat, high sugar content food. And they're sex crazed. Now they're just like eating themselves to death on this terrible food and like bonking themselves to the point where the babies are just showing up and babies and new babies of babies and and they're just, you know, more fast food and more babies and more and it's just it's a big old mess, and they don't know what to do about it. Um, they've basically given up. It used to be they can go in and kind of shoo the monkeys away. Um, but now, and they're quite vicious. So if people are out vacationing, a lot of them will not go outside because, yeah, they're going to get attacked by the monkeys. Hey, hey, well, the monkeys are getting the monkeys around. So uh, if you're there, if you're in Thai, and you're seeing the monkeys, you might want to move away. But they, there is a little bit of hope. They are bringing in the males, and I guess the females, and they are sterilizing them and then releasing them. You know, capture, snip, and release. So we'll see how that goes. They very much like we do that for uh, local feral cats. But that's what's going on there, gang. That's a whole lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, so if you're planning a trip, uh, make sure you have Lots of McDonald's. Now, also, if you want to do a trip and you got some serious cash and you want to be James Bond, do you remember the movie The Spy Who Loved Me? And James Bond had that, uh, it was like this weird floating pod and he was in there and he was, you know, he was making it with that chick. All right. So it's not going to be the same pod, but. You can uh, rent a pod. And basically, it's this huge, I don't know, I'll say 30, 40 foot diameter pod. 
and you go in it and you live there and it's got some solar panels so you get your electricity so you got a sun deck it's it's really kind of cool it's uh it's um it's like a 10 sided 8 sided i can't say this one anyway but it it's this white pod you rent it you hang out and you pretend you're like James Bond and you you know you know you got a bed in there you got a bathroom you can see uh they got a, like a like a see through area where you can uh be diving down yonder and see as your your loved one is chewed up by a, by a shark or something like that so yeah it's uh apparently it's it's uh it's in France so you got to go to France uh we'll leave a link in the description so if you're going there if you're gonna, it's uh, it's at the, it, it's located at the Creux de Rose, which is the Pink Granite Coast. My French is absolutely hideous. Um, yeah, that's a whole lot of fun. We're gonna go there too. Um, let's see. And what else we got here? Uh, one weird last story. Uh, and no one's really quite sure how to take this. Is apparently Iran is now using, um, they have a mock-up of a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Straits of Hermuz, and they're blowing it up. And they're doing all these different things. The one thing that I laughed at was they came in by helicopter, and they had these their commando guys coming down on ropes and then pretending to take over the aircraft carrier. Hey, guys, if there's a helicopter coming down anywhere on a U.S. aircraft um, and you're coming down by rope, and first off, you haven't de-staticked yourself, uh -huh, and you are coming anywhere near them, guys, that helicopter is not long for the big dunk because... We're not going to yeah, it won't be, they won't be there very long. Trust me, I know these things because they, they're very good. They, they can figure out when uh, people would be hanging out and, you know, coming to shoot them and stuff like that. But hey, Iran, you guys exercise all you want. This is America, land of the free, home of the braves. You guys can try to have fun doing that one. Anyway, that's our music. That means we have done another Slade and Mason show. Mm -mm -mm. JD, I do miss you. Hurry back, hurry back, because it's very annoying without you. Hi, I'm JD Slade. I'm Dan Mason, and, and this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Show. All right, gang, we'll see you all next Sunday. You guys, take it easy, be good, and see you. Bye. You know, I sit here and I listen. I listen to the music from Dano Music, and I'm thinking to myself, what was that guy thinking? <laughs>
All right, let's see you guys later. Bye. All right, team, you know the drill. So if you're enjoying the Slade and Mason show and you want to see more episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe button down yonder and hit the bell. You got to do both. Um, something bad will happen. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.